Hi, this is Brian Forrester coming to you from Paracas in Peru, and this is part two of a five-part series about the elongated skull's DNA results from Paracas. Now in part one, I briefly discussed the anomalies that were found in um, a number of the elongated skulls. 18 were tested, and good results came from about 12 or 13 of them. And the most commonality that I can glean from this is that the occurrence of the U2E haplogroup and the occurrence of H haplogroup, including possibly H1 and H1A, maybe even H2, mean that the point of origin for the Paracas would appear to be somewhere in the Caucasus area in between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Now, after doing a little more research, I've been able to focus on more the Black Sea area and actually Crimea. Now, this may seem strange, but the DNA does seem to point in that direction. And another interesting thing is that the largest elongated skulls in the world are found in Paracas, Peru. And then the second largest elongated skulls, which look very much similar to the Paracas, are found in the Black Sea area and in the Crimea. The Paracas culture lived between 2,000 and 3,000 years ago, and those elongated skulls found in the Crimea, again, are also around 2,000 plus years old. So the timeline is very similar. Now, I've also shown photographs in the beginning of this video. All of those are from the Black Sea area. And then also, if we try to look at um, the migration pattern, which I show maps of, it would appear that these people were displaced. Initially, they headed south into the Persian Gulf. Then they were able to catch winds and currents and travel eastwards, and then catch what is called the countercurrent into the Pacific. That could have taken them as far east as Colombia and Ecuador, and then simply by waiting for the winds to change from predominantly south, uh, coming from the south to coming from the north, they could have easily sailed down the coast of South America and found the largest natural bay in Peru, which is exactly at Paracas. Also notice the photos I showed you of the textiles, because the first two textiles are of the Paracas, the third one is from the Crimea area. And notice the very complicated coloration and tight weaving. The Paracas were the finest weavers in the Americas. And how could this be that they were a crude culture and then all of a sudden they developed all of these incredible colors? I think that is a key that links them back to the Crimea area not to mention the elongated heads. Uh, the ones in the Black Sea I don't think have been DNA tested yet, but that's something I would definitely like to pursue. And then the other thing is that there are thousands of date palm trees located here in Paracas. When you travel north towards Lima, they disappear. When you travel south towards Nazca, they disappear. So the focal point of these date palms are here in Paracas and nobody uses them to this day. They don't eat the dates, they don't use the palm fronds for anything. In the Middle East, the date palm is one of the most by far important plants. And I believe that as these people were escaping south towards the Red Sea, they may have collected some of the dates and nuts, knew their importance and took them with them, or seeds, took them with them on their eastward journey and planted them here in order to um, utilize the products. So that is part two. And then in part three, we're going to get into <clears throat> probably Rick Woodward, who's an anthropologist who studied the foramen magnum, which is where your spinal column enters your skull. It's much farther back than it should be in the Paracas skulls, and that indicates a genetic anomaly, that the foramen magnum being so far back is because the skull was so large and uh, kind of leaning backwards that the foramen magnum uh, genetically was there in order to keep the skull erect. I'll also be doing another video about the work of Dr. Michael Alde, who is a medical doctor, uh, who looks at the genetic differences and physical differences, and then also Dr. Malcolm Warren, who's a chiropractor. 
So, so far as I can tell, this will be a five-part series. I'll, I'll likely do a much larger video at some point of all of this information, but I want to get this to you reasonably soon. And this book will be coming out within two weeks, I believe, at L.A. Marzulli's website, which is www.lamarzulli.wordpress.com, I think, or net, or also www.lamarzulli.net. So from Bracus, blessings, and until next time.